Praise God. I pray that you're having a blessed day in the Lord. Give him honor and give him praise. This has been on my heart for about maybe, um, let's see, maybe for about maybe two, three weeks. God has been really showing me things and, and telling me um, things that I need to tell you all. And so here, here it is. God is, was saying, ask him to reveal what needs to be healed in your spirit, in your heart. And, and I'm not going to play with this thing. This is a thus said the Lord, by the way. He says, God says this. He says, there are broken people ministering to broken people. Well, let me say it the way he said it. There's broken pastors, broken bishops. And that's why the church is not being healed. Because we're so busy putting band-aids on everything. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. We're putting band-aids on everything. We're coaxing everything. Well, we're pretending to be okay when we're not. That's because those areas that have not truly been healed. And, and so we get into survival mode. What is survival mode? Survival mode means, oh, I'm going to make it. I'm, You know, it, before we got saved, that, that's what we used to do. Oh, ain't nobody going to stop me. I'm, I, I got this, whatever the case may be. However, it is different in this kingdom of God. It is different. Just like I told y'all, and, and I'm going all in. Somebody be a scribe for me today. It's different between kingdom folks and church folks. Kingdom folks, they love God. They love people, whether rich or poor, black or white. We don't care about that. We just want to know, do you have the spirit of God? Are you rolling with God? And even if you're not, we'll still love you. Might not fool with you, but we'll love you. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody playing up in here. Church folks, they only fool with their kind. Church folks will turn on you. <laughs> church folks will get other people to hate you. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Church, that's church folks. That's church folks that do that. So, Basically, what I've been saying is this, is that what we have to do is we have to ask God to heal us in those areas that haven't been healed. That's why a lot of people are hurting silently. I posted it yesterday. Didn't know I was going to do the video today. A lot of people are hurting silently because we also feel that if we say something it'll be all over church if we say something it'll be all over social media it, you can't hardly trust anybody and that's just the way it is but god say in this hour he'll heal you because if you don't get healed here's what happened just like i said just a while ago you'll go into survival mode and if you go into survival mode let me tell you what happened You'll pretend you're healed. You'll pretend you're okay. You'll pretend. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And now I, I know people say, well, you know, um, fake it till you make it. God doesn't operate like that. That was a lie. I'm just being real with you. That's not God. You don't have to fake it in the kingdom of God. If you're hurting, you need to tell somebody. But hold on. Here's the deal. Even if you're going through something, you have to pray and ask God. You have to use wisdom and discernment. Somebody be a scribe for me. You have to use wisdom and discernment, who to talk to, who not to talk to, because everybody should not know your business. I don't care if they're a pastor, a preacher, a teacher, a bishop, or whatever the case may be. God will assign someone that can address the situations that you have. God will assign somebody, there it is, that has an anointing anointing to heal anointing to deliver anointing to pray there it is right there you have to pray your way through this you can't fake this come on somebody hallelujah i feel the power of god you can't fake this there are some things that you can never fake and you can buy this you can buy that you can even pretend but you can't fake the healing of god the anointing of god the presence of god you cannot do it hallelujah and it's okay to say that i'm not okay but Again, you have to ask God. Don't be spreading your business all over. Ain't nobody want to hear all that. Trust me, they don't. Some people will use it against you. And I'm going to go ahead and be very transparent because, you know, I heard God say it and I was like, oh, God, here we go. But that's all right. That's what we do. When that thing happened to me last year, it hurt. It really hit me. Now, I'm going to go ahead and, and I'm not going to go into all that. I'm going to go into the healing part of what God said and what God is doing in my life. When that happened, I mean, the enemy started hitting me. Oh, if you're a woman of God, why did that happen? Oh, if you're a woman of God, how come you in this situation? Oh, this. And, and, and I mean, he was hitting me so hard and I didn't really have. I reached out to a couple of people. I'm not going to say no names. <laughs> Pastors that, hey, I got you. But you didn't really have me when I got in that situation. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm, I'm talking truth up in here tonight. 
I felt alone. I said, oh, wow, whoa, 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 whoa. They didn't know me like I thought they knew me. As, as church folks. See, kingdom folks would have rolled with me. Oh, uh, let, let, let's get on what I'm saying. I felt, my God, I started feeling what the enemy was telling me. I'm not qualified. Then all of a sudden, it was like, oh, you don't have any more ministry. You're not, I mean, enemy was hitting me because that's what he does. When he thinks that he has you down, he tries to take you out. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm telling you what I know. Hallelujah. And God had to really talk to me. God said, Deanna, remember who you are. Remember Joseph. Remember David. Remember Moses. Remember all my powerful people. I tested them. I said, oh, okay. That's, that's when I started getting my bearings. Okay, this is a test. This, but I felt shame. I, I felt unworthy. I, I, I felt. And it was a hit. It was a hard hit. It was so hard to get back up. I was so, because, oh, I'm, I'm going to walk this thing through. This is going to bless you. This is going to bless you. This is going to free you. Share. Tag, tag, and share. It's going to free you. It wasn't until I, how I really knew everything. And, and, and I see how God is tying everything together. It was, I think it was the day before yesterday, I was looking at a video by my current pastor. And he was talking about in the in the video how David's own blood came against him. And I started relating Absalom. You remember when Absalom came against his own father? They hid in a cave. I mean, Absalom was trying to kill his daddy. Walk with me, walk with me. And God said this. God had people around David that recognized the enemy. Oh, come on, somebody. I'm going to help you today. God told me to tell you, you better recognize your enemies. Oh, because I, I, oh, you don't hear what I'm saying. I'm going to walk this thing through. I'm going to walk this thing through. It could be somebody you love. It could be somebody that you have bore. It could be a son. It could be a daughter. It could be a husband. It could be a wife. You didn't understand what I'm saying. Y'all better walk with me up in here today. You have to recognize the enemy. David was too weak to recognize it. So the, the Bible says that his first sergeant, Got everybody together and said, David is in his feelings. I I'm going to go ahead and paraphrase it. Paraphrase it. David is in his feelings, but we got to kill him. Because we, we got to save the king. Y'all ain't ready for me up in here. You have to have people around you that see you as a queen or a king. <laughs> David didn't have no strength. That was his child. Come on, somebody. If anything could hit you like that, I know what it feels like. Y'all ain't ready for me up in here today. That'll take the wind out of you. And it took the wind out of David. However, let's get back to the story. The first sergeant said, we, we, we got to kill him. And that's just what he did. They surrounded Absalom. He was caught in a tree. He had long hair, beautiful hair. And it was the first sergeant that stuck him. Came back to David. Your enemy is dead. He didn't say, son. He said, your enemy is dead. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And David, they, they, they say, put sackcloth. And, and so the sergeant was like, uh-uh, uh-uh. He gave him a moment to kind of like get his barons together. But he went back to David. He said, excuse me. You got men that fought for you. You are king. He said, gather your senses and get up and go, 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 go gird your men and let's go get our kingdom back. Y'all better understand what I'm saying. You have to have people around you that will fight for you when you can't. That will recognize the enemy when you can't. That will understand when you can't. Y'all ain't ready for me up in here today. And that's what have happened to some of you, God says. You got hit. You got hit real hard. Sometimes we get hit so hard. And, and, and I did it. I did it. I did it. I, I got to get back up. I'm prophet is the addiction. I can't let them see me weak. I, I can't let them win. I, I can't. I, 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 I. And then I realized I couldn't do it. I said, God, this is too heavy. You can't do this alone. Because in the flesh, it's a mess. God said, I got you right where I want you now. I got you right where I want you now. He said, I want you to come up higher. And I want you to understand that I'm God all by myself. And then we'll even, we'll even ask God, God, why did you allow this to happen? How, did I do something? Did, 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 did. This is a test, Deanna. Before I can really give you what I have for you, I got to know, can you stand the rain? I got to know, can you stand through the pain? I got to know when they talk about you, when they mock you, when they lie on you, when they turn their back. Y'all don't hear what I just said. 
I got to know that you're going to stay with me. You got broken people ministering to broken people. Now y'all understand what I'm saying? You'll be doing ministry and dealing with some stuff. You'll be doing life and dealing with some stuff. Only in the kingdom of God. We try to run. We try to hide. We try to pretend. Put on mask. I'm okay. When you're not okay. And I'm, I'm going to say some uncomfortable things that some of you don't agree with. That's fine too. As long as I hear God, I ain't worried about nobody else. Now, I'm not against anybody that be talking about mental health. Understand me. But if you don't pull that thing back and understand what demonic force it really is, you'll be fighting the wrong demon. Come on, somebody. Somebody be a scribe for me. You'll be fighting this when it's that. That's why you have to have the spirit of wisdom and discernment so God can tell you exactly what it is. I'm going to be transparent even more so at the end of that thing because you know I know. I say, God, what happened? He said, I had to do what you couldn't do. I told you to sever. I told you to get away. I told, he said, I had to allow it. It was the only way you was going to understand me and listen. Because sometimes we, we get in our own way and we want to do what we want to do. And, and, and that's a dangerous place. And I, I try to tell people that. Because if you don't do it, God will do it. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah up in here. If you don't do it, don't worry. You ain't got to worry about it, honey, bunny. God will do it. And when he do it, everybody going to know. See, God will give you a chance to do it yourself. Because this is not about you. Huh, there it is right there. This is not about, this is bigger than us. This is about the kingdom of God. People are hurting and dying in this hour and people playing. Let me tell you how people playing. You want to be this and you want to be that, but you can't even handle the truth. You can't. You can't. Because the truth is, we as a church right now, we're in trouble. We're in trouble. The reason why there are trouble out there, because we're in trouble in here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to talk it like I walk it. Y'all don't want nobody to tell you nothing. Everybody get offended. People don't want to be anointed no more. They want to be a star. We're compromising. We're taking more worldly in than the church. So now the anointing is leaving out because God is not going to share his presence with no demon. And people don't want to make a choice for God. What we did is we let prosperity and all these other spirits in. And we stopped having the standard of God. We stopped holding the blood stained banner. We stopped standing for right and righteousness. We started saying, oh, it's okay. Oh, oh that's okay. And, and that's okay. And now you have a lukewarm church. Not all churches. Let, let, let me say that. Not all churches. Not all people. But most. So before there can be revival, there must be repentance. Before there can be repentance, there must be that walk. That walk and, and that look in the mirror between you and God. You see everybody always preaching about this one and that one and this and that. But truth be told, when God really growing you in the spirit and the natural, he will show you you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how it goes. Whew. So this is going to be like a three to four series. Because I can't say it all right now. I have an appointment I have to go to. But I will tell you this. We got to get right before we get left. So God bless you all. Tag, share. I hope this message, I hope it helped you. Because that's what this is all about. Preaching and teaching is not about, you know, we y'all look at me. No. It's about healing, revealing, and growing. Growing and knowing. That it could only be by God. So God bless you. God keep you. Y'all know what time it is. This prophet is Deanna Dixon. Roll our soldiers for that is truly who we are. God bless.